Pongam Nya Leaf Call. In this e lecture, we will study about one of the important gall disease named as Pongam Nya Leaf Call. Let us start with introduction. As it is clear from the title that galls are present on the leaves of Pongamia pineta and these leaf gall look like the buds. These are mostly present on adaxial surface of the leaves but sometimes these galls may be seen on abaxial surface. These galls are green, irregular, swollen at the anterior end and their internal cavity is densely filled with numerous downwardly projecting hairs. The structure or type of gall depend on the organ on which it is formed like leaves, stem, flower etc. and the species of plant and gall forming organism. If the galls are induced by different species of gall maker on the same organ of a given plant, they are structurally very different. The image shows the leaf with galls in Pongamia pineta. As it is clearly visible, the galls are present on the surface of the leaves. And in this picture, we will clearly observe that the leaves get completely malformed as many galls are observed on the leaf surface. Causal Organism The pathogen responsible for the disease is Eriophysis cherini messin. It is a mite. But beside this mite, a midge species, My Myricomia pongamia, are also responsible for this disease. Both the midge species, Myricomia pongamia, and a mite species, Eriophysis cherini messe, work together. And this result in gall formation in Pongamia pineta, particularly during the rainy season. In absence of any of the two causal organisms, there is no gall formation. So we can say that galls are very specific. Morphology of leaf gall. The size of the leaf gall in Pongamia pineta is approximately 7 to 15 mm in length and 1 to 2.5 mm in thickness. These leaf gall are regular, obovoid or they may be obliquely opiriform or they may be polyp-like hollow pedicellate galls on the upper surface of the leaflet. Obovoid means Ovoid with narrow end at the base or obliquely opiriform means inversely pear shaped with a narrow end at the base and pedicellate means with a pedicel. These galls are acistiferous as they harbor infection and disease and they are also indehiscent as they do not open at maturity. These galls are epiphyllous and long. The galls are simple and free, glabrous, green and unilocular as they have only one locule or chamber. They are pedicellate mostly on the leaflet of the host. Gall cavity is large with long many unicellular pointed heads. The gall tissue consists of simple and closely packed parenchyma cells. Anatomy of leaf gall The leaf gall cavity open to outside by narrow passage through the pedicel. The palisade and spongy parenchyma of the leaflet become broad horseshoe shaped and undifferentiated parenchyma cells. 
In this process of gall formation, vascular bundles and fibrous tissue apparently increases in the affected leaflet. In leaf gall, the intercellular space is more and irregular. Thus, galls are spongy in this case. In this rich and spacious intercellular space, the mites breed and they survive several years and complete many generations in one year. These mites cause a lot of damage to leaves and since leaves are the main source of food for uh, entire tree, gall formation definitely reduces the physiological activity of the plant. The image shows various stages of gall mite seen inside the gall leaves. These are the various stages of mites and as seen inside the gall leaves. These galls act as a physiological sink. Physiological sink are the organs in which organic matter is stored or consumed. Mostly these are the meristematic tissues which uses the primary molecule for growth and storage tissues such as fruit, seeds, stem, tubers and root. Source, particularly leaf in this case, Leaves are, act as a source of primary organic molecule and from the leaf the foot translocate and metabolite to sink where it is stored for future use or growth. Galls also work as a sink and in the case of gall these metabolites are used by the insect larvae Effect of leaf gall formation These leaf gall adversely affect the quality of the leaf and also reduces the economic utility of the plant. Due to the formation of leaf gall, there is a reduction in the leaf area and this will drastically affect the photosynthetic area of the plant, thereby leading to biomass loss. Though the development of chlorophyll remain unaffected by gall formation in the leaflet, the size of the gall cells becomes very large due to increase in water, cytoplasm, vacuole, fusion of plastid and mitochondria and resulting into a reticulate masses. Sometimes giant multinucleated cells also formed. The number of stomata reduces in gall leaflet. There is also reduction in total nitrogen content in the gall tissue. Vitamin B12, niacin and reducing sugar also become low while vitamin B6 remains unchanged. Chromosomal abnormality are also observed in the gall cells. Economic importance of leaf gall The plant uh, galls inhabit various stages of insects and these insects attract the pollinators and other predators. Thus, these plant galls help in maintaining the food chain. These plant galls also represent an example of parasitism as in these uh, galls, insects live, li live and they take nourishment from the host plant. All the stages of insects can be seen inside the leaf gall. Gall management. How can we control the development of these leaf gall? Manual removal of foliage and destruction by burning them may be one of the method to control the leaf gall. Besides this manual method, spraying insecticides like monocrotophus dimethoate 
at a concentration of 0.1% together with acaricide like dicofol at a concentration of 0.1% as a prophylactic treatment before the problem occur. Biocontrol agents are also helpful in the control of this disease. Pest resistant variety can be planted to get rid of gall problem. For further readings, I would like to suggest these links and research paper. Please go through them and take benefit of them. Thank you for watching.